Hey, what is up guys? And today we're going to be taking a look at the Hawkeye Firefly Fortress. Now, I did take this out for FPV run and a long-range test. Well, actually, we could say mid-range test because my full-blown long-range testing setup isn't quite ready, but this was the first official mini test. So, this is a $31 combo here that comes with the camera, the VTX, and the other wires and stuff that you might need. Now, what's really cool about this is it has a really nice mounting solution, but then the mounting solution isn't really well thought out because once you mount it like so, then the antenna will stick to the bottom and I forgot how to mount this thing. Now, the mounting solution wasn't really well thought out because once you set up the mounting solution, the antenna pops to the bottom. Now, that's not a really big issue if they added a 90 degree MMCX port, but they gave you a straight one here, but that's not a deal breaker for me. So what I ended up doing was bringing a 90 degree MMCX port to an SMA and set up a Foxair Lollipop antenna, which is the little tiny ones, which are crazy good. And I'll get into that in a little bit. So let's talk about some of the features here. Now this is a 72 channel up to 200 milliwatt selectable VTX. Now this is pretty insane for such a tiny little monster. And I was very curious if I was going to get around one kilometer of range on this. And we're going to see that in a tiny bit. Now the voltage input this thing takes is 5 volts. And the camera is what takes one to 6S LiPos. And the voltage regulator for the VTX is inside the camera here. So if we take a look here and we set this up and we install the connector. Now I did modify the connector because I did have it in my Zod Nano Talon. So this was taking raw, so this was taking raw 4S input. And here are the, just the other wires for the video ground and the five volt that are going to the transmitter here. Now let's talk a little bit about the, some of the features that I really liked before going into the testing. Now this thing has an OSD, built in OSD. They do provide you with the remote to control everything, which is really nice because I did have to invert the image because of the way this was set up. So that was not a big issue since there is software side that can fix that for me. Also another thing what I also really liked was the fact that you can choose between 16 by nine and four by three. I switched it over to four by three because I'm using a fat shark goggle and there is plenty plenty of other OSD options you even have the crosshairs you have the flight time or just the timer basically we can't see really flight time and it has the battery voltage which was what I was relying on the whole time of my flight because currently my flying wing is still in its preparation stages to become my long range testing setup so I was really relying on the OSD information from this because my current wing doesn't have OSD or any type of flight control or just a stabilizer, which is just, it works on its own. So I was really relying on this and hoping that I will be able to see because the sun was already down and it was just right in your face when you're flying. Now the overall light exposure and everything was handling very well, but my main, main, main test and what I really wanted to see is will this guy overheat of 10 minutes of flying at 200 milliwatts and to my surprise, it didn't. So that was one good thing that happened. Also, I got around 900 meters of range, which we could say one kilometer of range, which is really good. So it's obviously outputting around, at, we can say more than 100 milliwatts. Now, I did hit that one kilometer mark without any breakup, which was really nice. However, I was still afraid because this was my first ever preparation for my long range testing setup. Now for the price and the size and the weight and the, and the, the amount of footprint this thing takes, I think is absolutely remarkable. And with all the options that's inside the OSD of this, it, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, at least for a wing, this thing was, it was just gorgeous. I mean, I had no issues. It just performed. I, I built a lot of trust into this every time I was taken out for a flight. Now I took it for around Maybe we could say five flights of around 10 to 15 minutes each. And uh, I was going very far distances and it was doing really, really well. So that was really nice. I didn't see any signs of overheating. And when it came down, it was still pretty good. Now, the reason for that, I truly, I think is because this is because the input voltage on this is five volts. Thus, there isn't that much current going through, but it's outputting pretty decently. I mean, I could say it's outputting a minimum of 100 milliwatts but it could be outputting the full 200 even more, but I don't have the current equipment to test that for you. But I did hit one kilometer range, which is absolutely phenomenal for $31. And this is what you get. Now they provide you with a lot of other things. I mean, not many other things. They give you extra wires, mounting solution, you know, the, the OSD control board, which is really nice. You don't have, it doesn't get in the way. You can just, it has its own plug on the side. So you can go ahead and change that as you like. 
So in, in that perspective, I truly believe you're getting a lot for what you're paying for. And the image quality was really good. It was decent. It, I mean, I've seen better and obviously there's going to be better, but it wasn't, it's not bad. It's really good. It's actually better than the, the cheap Chinese Fox here ones that I use always. So in that perspective, I was really satisfied with it and I was really happy with it because it performed very well. However, a little side note, every now and then I would get these little black lines in the, in the, in the camera. Now, I don't know if it has to do with the OSD or it has to do with some kind of a syncing thing or just because I switched it from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3. It's not really bad, but you just see these little black dots just come every once in a while on the screen. Now, I do have an issue with that on an iNav uh, uh, flight controller. I think it was, one of, it was a flight controller that I flashed iNav on and the OSD had the same thing, but that's just constant. But here it was just, it would come for a little and then just disappear. And you'll see that, I'll show you that in the, feed, in, in the video feed. But overall, you know, I, I flew around, like I mentioned, 900 meters with no breakup whatsoever, which was really insane. Now I could have pushed it a little bit more and a lot more because I was using the R9M on this uh, Zold Nano Talon, but I was a little bit afraid because this was my first adventure to long range testing. So I really needed to trust my equipment. It was actually the first time I ever flew this Nano Talon more than 200 meters. And it was the first time I actually flew with FPV also. So the amount of trust that I gained in this was was remarkable. Now for my current use and what I have been using it throughout the day, it was actually a very good camera solution slash setup. For $31, you are getting pretty much what you're paid for, a lot more than what you're paying for, in my opinion. Because, you know, don't forget this, this, is, this thing takes such a small amount of footprint and such a small amount of weight. Also, the, the quality, the picture quality of the camera was really good. The light transition, you know, handling the sun, the exposure, it was amazing. I didn't have any issues. I wasn't blinded, not once, looking straight at the sun or just, you know, flying wherever. It was handling itself very nicely and I was really satisfied with it. And um, well, that's all I can currently say, guys. I mean, I can't say anything else anymore, but I'm just gonna leave you guys with the footage and hopefully you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>